Hello, this is Vic. Welcome to my channel and thank you for viewing my videos. Today I'm just outside the city walls of the old city of Jerusalem. Now these walls were built here in 1537 by the magnificent Sultan, Orma Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent. And they're in perfect shape. They're absolutely beautiful. Now there are eight gates around these magnificent walls. One was added later on as you're going to hear in this documentary. So let's take a tour of these magnificent gates. Let's learn something of their history and let's sense how it feels to go through each one of them. Here's a great documentary about the gates of the old city of Jerusalem. Enjoy. This is Vic. Bye bye. And uh, here's the gate of St. Stephen. St. Stephen's Gate or Lion's Gate as it is known. Now it is called St. Stephen because uh, just outside this gate is where the death of the first martyr of Christianity, St. Stephen, took place by stoning just outside this gate. It is also known as Lion's Gate because there are lions engraved. You're going to see them from the outside. Let's get a view of this very, very busy gate. There's heavy traffic going through constantly here right there. Now this gate is very very important to the Israelis during the Six Day War in 1967 on June 7th 1967. This is where the Israeli paratroopers came in into the old city to take it over from the Jordanians. So here it is. Let's walk through and let's take a view of this gate from the outside. Now in the distance is the Mount of Olives, which is very important to Christians. There are many, many Christian churches down that way. And uh, here is a view from the outside. You can see the carved lions. There are two on each side of the gate. But here is a view from the outside of this very, very busy and noisy, as you can hear, place. And uh, here is the smallest of the uh, gates of the old city of Jerusalem, Dung Gate. D U N G gate. The Arabic name for this gate translates as the Gate of the Moors or yeah. Moors because in the 16th century there were North African immigrants that lived in this area. The uh, Hebrew name translates as the Rubbish Gate and that's because just outside this gate where I'm standing now there used to be the old cities garbage dump. Now you see the arches right there uh, that indicates the size of the gate when the Ottomans had control of the city and it has been widened, it became wider. Uh, the Jordanians made it wider so that the cars can uh, pass through. Here it is. Now, if we were to go through, we will see the Western Wall and the Temple Mount right ahead of us. Let's go. Okay, let's go. Here we are, right in front of us is the entrance to uh, Western Wall and if I turn this way you will see Temple Mount and uh, the Al-Aqsa Mosque right there. And uh, here's Zion Gate, a very very historic gate to the Israelis.
during the 1948 Arab-Israeli war, Israeli soldiers attempted to break through this gate in order to relieve the besieged Jewish quarter, which lies right behind this gate. They were very, very unsuccessful, and they suffered great losses. Now, if you go, if I go a little closer, you're going to see the bullet holes all over this gate. You can see them right there. And uh, here's a view of the walls from outside the gate, right there. And here is the gate. And let's get a little closer and look at the bullet holes and the damage from the bullets on the walls, right there. Right there, quite visible. Okay, let's pass this gate very quickly before a car shows up. I'm now inside the city and if I turn around down there is a Jewish quarter and uh, here's Damascus gate by far the busiest gate here in the old city of Jerusalem this is a microcosm of the Palestinian world here. You can see shops left and right, women selling vegetables. This uh, gate now is known as the Gate of the Column by the Arabs. And that's because Hadrian has set up a gate with a column here, which doesn't exist anymore. Now I am inside the city. And I want to show you the activity. This is very early in the morning. Now you can see to my left, to the left of the frame, the Israeli soldiers in the shade guarding the traffic and everything that is going on here. Let's go up a little bit to get a better view of this magnificent gate, by far the most magnificent from an architectural perspective. It has changed considerably since the times of the Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent when it was built in the 1530s. Right there. Let's go through. And again, it's early in the morning, so the pedestrian traffic is not as heavy as it would normally be. You can see the huge ancient doors here. And here we are, we're outside. Right there, not the best views since the sun is right behind it but you can get an idea. How magnificent and how big it is. And again, you can see the Israeli soldiers on their right. Just a very last comment about these two doors I just showed you. These uh, two ancient doors here at the gate. You can see the bullet holes from the, most likely from the 1948 Arab-Israeli war and conflict. If they're not from the 1948, they are certainly from 1967. A lot of people confuse the two, what happened in 67 and what happened in 1948. But you can see the bullet holes here, hundreds and hundreds of them. What you're looking at right now is the only sealed gate to the old city of Jerusalem, known as the Golden Gate. Now, I have read that this gate was sealed by the Muslims in the 7th century AD to prevent the non-Muslims from going into the Temple Mount. 
the Temple Mount, as a matter of fact, is right on the left side of the frame. You can see the top of the golden of the Dome of the Rock sticking out. According to the Jews, this is the gate that the Messiah will use to enter the old city of Jerusalem when he comes to this world. Another uh, legend that I read was that the, the Muslims sealed the uh, gate and they also built a Muslim cemetery that you see in front of it to keep the Messiah from uh, coming through the gate when he comes to the world. Take your pick. This is it, Golden Gate. Now there are two parts to Jaffa Gate. There is this part that you see here, which is the original gate. And right next to it, there is a very big opening. Right there for traffic. I am now outside the city walls and Jaffa Gate or Jaffa in uh, Jaffa Gate in Arabic or Jaffo in Hebrew is right behind there and I'll show it to you. But this opening that you see here is not actually part of the original gate. This opening here was created in 1898 when the German Kaiser was visiting and they opened up this big space for his parade to go through. And here are the city walls. And again, this is not Jaffa Gate. That's where Jaffa Gate is. And we're gonna go through it from inside the city towards the outside. Let's go. I'm now inside the gate. You're gonna notice it makes a 90 degree turn and that's because if you were an invading army and you broke through the gate you shouldn't be able to go straight into the city you would slow down by making the turn right there and here's the gate once more and here's a view of the walls above it And uh, finally, here's the last gate, the new gate. Now, this gate did not exist until 1887, when it was created in order to provide access to the uh, Christian Quarter, which lies right behind it. In order to go to the Christian Quarter before this gate, you had to go through either Jaffa or Damascus Gate, and that's a long way. And this is why this gate was created. And uh, here's what Damascus Gate looks like right at sunset time. Look at all the activity and the noise.